Hey everybody, welcome to DirectX 11 tutorial 59. I know it's been a while since I have made a tutorial. I wasn't exactly sure what I wanted to do next. I initially planned on showing how the way that we're rendering lights becomes kind of laggy when we have a lot of lights, but I decided against that just because we are not ready to get into possible fixes for that because they're a little bit more complex. So instead, I thought it would be good to cover how to change some things around so that we can have 2D rendering and 3D rendering at the same time. Once we get 2D rendering added, we can take a look at the stencil buffer and some cool effects that we can achieve using that. In this tutorial, our primary focus will be taking our game object class and stretching it out so that we have a 2D version of the game object class and a 3D version of the game object class. Currently, our game object class is really just uh, our 3D version of the game object class. So let's create two new headers. We're going to call this game object 2D. And we're also going to create game object 3D. We also need to create two new CPP files game object 2D and game object 3D. Now, of course, let's go up to show all files and move these new files up to our graphics folder. Now for our game object 2D, we're going to include game object because the game object 2D class will inherit from it. And the same with the 3D version. So first, let's go ahead and do the 3D version because we already know how that should be laid out. All right, so we have our game object 3D and we are inheriting from game object. Now, if we go back to game object, let's figure out what in here only pertains to 3D objects. You might think that the position and rotation and all of that will only apply to 3D objects because there's three components to the position, for example. But we can use all three components in 2D as well and have the Z component just be the depth. So that will control if we're drawing something that goes behind other objects or in front of them. Because of this, I'm going to keep all of the position and vector functions in the initial game object class. The set look at position, that only really applies to 3D objects, so we know that this will get moved to the 3D class. The get forward, right, backward, and left vectors will also only apply to the 3D class. So first let's go ahead and move these. And also one other thing is before in all of this code, I was using this a lot, and most of the times that I was using it, it wasn't necessary. And I'm not really sure why. I liked the way it looked before, but now I'm kind of starting to hate it. So I'm going to begin removing all of the this is where you don't actually need them. So first, let's move these into our new game object 3D. So I'm going to cut these, go to the game object 3D, public, private, put those there. Now, if we go back to the game object CPP, we need to copy those definitions. So we'll copy these, or we'll cut them rather. Go into the game object 3D, include the game object 3D header. I just pasted these, and our new class name is game object 3D, so we're going to do a control H, change it from game object game object 3d just for this current document do a replace all all right and that also replaced it in the header so just need to change that back next I'm going to fast forward this and just remove all the unnecessary instances of this that I put in here okay let's go back to the game object header and let's see what else we will not need. So 
update direction vectors, this only really applies to 3D objects. So let's cut that and move that down here for now. We decided that the position and rotation will apply to all game objects, so we'll leave that here. However, all of this vector forward, up, backward, left, right, um, that only really applies to 3D objects. So we're going to cut all of these variables as well as the update direction vectors. And we are going to go into the game object 3D. And instead of private, this will actually be protected. That way classes that inherit from it can access these. And we will paste these here. Next, we need to copy the update direction vectors function. So let's go to the game object CPP. We are just going to cut this, go back to the game object 3D, paste this. I'm going to highlight this and do a control H to replace in this selection. First, I'm going to replace this with nothing. And do a replace all. Then I am going to just change this to game object 3D. The only thing I'm going to add is in game object 3D, we will also have the virtual void update matrix. And we're going to do it the same way that we did in the game object CPP, where it's pretty much just an assert to make sure that it is actually overridden. We'll change that to 3D. All right, so next we need to go to our objects that were previously inheriting from game object. So I believe that was the renderable game object. So we'll change that to game object 3D. And then also the camera. So we'll just change the header and then change it to inherit from game object 3D. Now let's test this and see if I forgot anything. All right, it looks like we are good to go here. One quick thing that I meant to change a long time ago and just forgot to was if we go to our project properties and if we go to C++ and you'll see down here it says multi-processor compilation. We want to select yes and this will allow uh, multiple processors to be used so that we can compile faster. So far we haven't covered anything new. All that we've done is We've taken our game object class and we've extracted out the 3D specific parts and put that into a game object 3D class. Now let's take a look at the game object 2D class. So all we are going to do is create a game object 2D and inherit from game object. And all that we will have in this is just uh, the virtual void update matrix so that anything that inherits from game object 2D will have to override that. Now if we go to the game object 2D CPP, we will include the header and we will just have the assert requiring update matrix to be overridden. So now we successfully have a 2D game object class and a 3D game object class. Now if you're wondering why I didn't just have the 3D game object inherit from the 2D game object. We might want to add functionality later that only pertains to 2D game objects. The next thing that I would like to cover is setting up our 2D camera and changing our current camera to be the 3D camera. So what we are going to do is we're going to change this from camera to 3D camera. So let's do a control H and replace everywhere that has camera with camera 3D entire solution, replace all. And we will rename this to camera3d.h. And then down in the source files from camera cpp to camera3d.cpp. Let's just make sure that this still compiles. Okay, that still compiles. So looks like that was a simple replace, no issues there. Now let's take a look at our 2D camera. So we're going to create a new header. We're going to call this camera 2D. And then we are going to create a new source file, camera2d.cpp. The CPP, let's go ahead and include the header. 
Let's go to show all files and let's move the two new files up to our graphics folder. Uncheck that. And let's take a look at our camera 2D header. So we know that we're going to be inheriting from our game object 2D for our 2D camera. And we're just going to have our constructor, which initializes our values. We're going to have something for set projection values, which we'll get to in just a second. We're going to have our get ortho matrix, which we will also cover in a moment. The get world matrix for just getting the, you know, the position matrix for the camera. Update matrix, that's uh, exactly like how we had for the 3D camera. And then we are storing, you see, something called an ortho matrix and a world matrix. Now, the way that our 2D camera will work is we will use something called an orthographic matrix. All right, so if you take a look at this drawing, I don't have my normal drawing program installed yet, so that's why I'm using paint. Uh, the green numbers are the X values and the red numbers are the Y values. So before when we did 2D drawing, the very left side was negative one, the very right side was one, and the top was positive one and the bottom was negative one. Now, the reason that we're using an orthographic matrix is because we can instead use uh, window coordinates like you'd expect in uh, a Windows application. If you've ever used like C sharp uh, forms or maybe it's even the same in C++ forms, I'm not sure. We will have a coordinate system like this where the top left is zero for both the X and Y and the very right side will be the width, which in our case would be uh, 800. It's supposed to be x equals. And then the very bottom will be the height of the window, which in our case will be 600. So if we go back to our code, another thing I said I would get right back to was the set projection values. Now, when we had the 3D camera, we had set projection values and we had a field of view for degrees and an aspect ratio, and then the near Z and far Z. The similarity here is the 2D camera has a near Z and far Z, and this is really just used uh, for the depth for determining which sprites show at the front and which sprites are like background sprites. The bigger the Z value, it will show up behind everything. The size of the sprite is not actually affected when we're using an orthographic matrix. The only other values that we will need is the width of the window and the height of the window when we are creating this matrix. So now let's go to the CPP and look at what that will look like. All right, so for our constructor, we're just initializing the position to zero and the rotation to zero. Then we are calling the update matrix function. For set projection values, we're going to call something called XM matrix orthographic off center LH. Now, for this, you see the arguments are the value for the left, so we have zero, because we want that to be zero, the value for the right, so we pass in the window's width, the value for the bottom, so we pass in the window's height uh, for the maximum y value at the bottom, and then the view top, which are passing in zero. Now, if we didn't use the, we could use the LH instead of the off center LH, but then if we drew something at zero, zero, it would start at the center of the screen. And I wanted to start at the top left, just like how uh, the direct XTK works when we are drawing text. And then of course, we just have the near Z and the far Z Get ortho matrix, we'll just return the ortho matrix. Get world matrix returns the world matrix. And then for updating, we are taking the rotation matrix uh, and then just multiplying it by the translation offset. You'll notice that in the translation offset, we are not taking the Z component into account because it's a 2D camera. Okay, and that is all that we are going to cover for this tutorial. In the next tutorial, we are going to implement a sprite class and draw a 2D object um, probably just in the top left or bottom left or something of this screen.